You know what that game needs? One of these, because that was dry as hell. Honestly, if you lot made it through that 90 minutes, you lot are a bigger man than I am, because that was an absolute drag trying to get through. What's going on guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another match review for you guys today. It's Chelsea nil, Sevilla nil, it's another draw, we're moving like a coffee shop in Amsterdam with the amount of draws that we got on display right now. But it is another game where we failed to be decisive. I will try and spin a positive way on this as much as I can, but there isn't really a lot to talk about. The, mo the most positive I can say is our defensive display was very good. And Ben Chilwell, by far and away, looks like the best centre-back this club's seen since Ashley Cole. Even though the bar has been in hell ever since Ashley Cole left, other than the little spell on the Alas for Equator on the left, Chilwell looked immense today. And I think man of the match by a mile. I will drop that right now. But we are going to go into this game. We are going to chat about Chelsea and Sevilla. We're also going to talk about a legend that has finally decided to put the cap back on his head, put the gloves back on, and save Chelsea when they need him most. The king has returned. Petr Cech is back as Chelsea goalkeeper coach as an emergency precaution, but he is back. We are going to discuss that towards the end of the video as well. But before we start this video, if you guys haven't done so already, smash that like button, press the subscribe button as well, and hit the bell notification button as well to be the first to know whenever we release any new content on this channel. And yeah, let's delve into this absolute bore fest. Right, Chelsea versus Sevilla. We'll go straight into the lineup and I didn't really have too many issues with the lineup. I thought it was a very strong back line, James Zuma, Thiago Silva, and Ben Chilwell. I understood having the pivot of Kante and Jorginho in it as well. I thought Kovacic would get a start in this match, but I think maybe Frank Lampard's trying to like stamp out what his main starting eleven is going to be, and he wanted to persist with Kante and Jorginho. Mount on the right, or no, Mount on the left, which made even more sense than Mount's omission in the first place. I didn't get why we played Mount. I mean, I'm being serious with you guys. The guys overplayed to death, and it was so clear to see on the pitch as well. And I don't think it's right continuing to play Mount when he's in this sort of form as well, because all it's doing is setting himself up for more hate from Chelsea fans who are sitting there going, why is he getting this game time when the performances aren't justifying it? Hudson Adoy. I don't know why Hudson Adoy didn't start today. It's another game where I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, why didn't we play another fit right winger that we had possibly to play, but we're playing Mason Mount as a cut price version, even though it's not his natural position? It didn't make any sense today. One thing I'll understand about the way we played is I think Frank Lampard wanted to protect the defence a lot more and wanted to try and focus on the defensive style of play because you saw the Southampton game and how piss poor our defending was. And if we played an open, expansive brand of football, we were probably going to see the same sorts of mistakes on, on display. Maybe you can look at the positives and say with Mendy and Thiago Silva, we're still yet to concede a goal. But that comes anyway. Uh, realistically, I thought the defensive performances were good, but... We struggled to have any sort of impact on that match. Sevilla dominated us for large periods of the game. Even especially in the first half, we just weren't really that far up at the races. And Golo Kante, that possibly could have been his worst performance in a Chelsea show. He's really, not, he's really lucky not to get sent off. So many rash fouls. I mean, credit to Sevilla for just dropping to the floor and, do, and showing Manchester United whenever they could with the amount of times they were dropping onto the floor with the slightest touch. But you know that's what you're going to get with these La Liga teams. They're always looking at the referee. They're always trying to get something out of the referee. They're always trying to drop down whenever there's an easy opportunity to do it. And they're going to surround the ref and try and force pressure on him. Don't give him the opportunity to do it. And Golo Kante, he is a class tackler, but... He really should have seen Sevilla's style of play coming because he just played into the hand for the vast majority of the game. And I'm really, he was really lucky not to get sent off. Pulisic as well on the right-hand side. I thought 
He was all right, but he's not as effective on the right-hand side compared to the left, and we know that. He's been our most efficient player since Project Restart happened. Why are we not playing him on his better position? Mason Mount on the left already looks tired. He already looks overworked. He already looks like he should be give, being given a rest, and it's shades of Tammy Abraham towards the start of 2020 when he was being overplayed too many times. It was having an impact on his performances as well. When it comes to these youth players, you can't keep playing them game in and game out. Just because they're young and they're fresh doesn't mean that they've got energy to last for days. Mason Mount does, but this energy runs out. If you keep playing them game in and game out, especially with the fixture list as congested as it is right now, you're going to have a tired player who can't play to the level that you want him to play at, and it's just going to leave him out for more criticism, and that's exactly what's happening here. Pulisic should have been on the left, hudson Doyle should have been on the right in my opinion. Kai Havertz, not the best performances from him, he struggled to have a lot of impact on the game. Same thing with Timo Werner, I thought his first touch and some of his decision making really wasn't that good today. Midfield link up also needed a lot of improving, but I, I do sound like I'm drawing on a lot of negative factors, I want to try to talk positively. Defensively we're very solid. I think um, Edouard Mendy had an excellent performance. It would have definitely been 2-0 two, two or 3-0 severe with Kepper in goal. I'm sure of that. There was a brilliant save in the first half as well. Ben Chilwell, like I've already said previously, amazing performance at left back. If it already wasn't his spot, it is now and no one's coming close to him. It was an excellent performance from him. He was saving Kurt Zuma's arse on multiple occasions. Kurt Zuma, another player who had a really iffy game and... There was a couple mistakes in his performances today and it's, it, this is the thing, this is why I don't like overhyping defenders and I said the same thing towards the back end of last season when Kurt Zuma was coming into form and I said last season was just like a rolling circle of defenders, what, two were having bad performances and everyone wanted the one that wasn't playing, reality they were all a little bit shaky, Kurt Zuma's always been shaky on the ball, we've known that. Aerially, he should be a bit better, and for corners and set pieces, you do see his impact and influence, but defensively, there was issues today, there was a lot of issues today, and it's not uncommon, but it didn't really make sense to run the form that he was having previously, ignore the Southampton game, but that's the same thing that's been happening with all of our defenders, Christians has had run the forms and then just looked bummy as hell, even Tomori, even though Lampard wasn't playing him for vast periods, when he came back, still looked a little bit rusty. At least he had Thiago Silva next to him though, at least, and it wasn't Andreas Christensen. Thiago Silva had another excellent performance, read the game perfectly, came out with a bunch of vital blocks and was all around the pitch wherever we needed him to be. And even with him pulling up before pre-match, I'm surprised he had a performance this good as well. Which just begs the question more to me, why didn't he play on Saturday? I've already said I don't believe that he's 36 argument is a legitimate argument. I think he could have had a lot more game time. I think if other players from the Brazil national team were having the game time over the weekend, he could have had some as well. But if there's one thing I want to talk about before I go into player ratings, it is game management. Frank Lampard's game management does need to improve some of the substitutions that didn't make sense. We had five substitutions available to use and we didn't fully use it properly. Mason Mount should have been off at half time in my opinion. First off there was sorry, first off there was barely any impact from him. And he was still on for like the first 20, 30 minutes of the second half as well. And it's just tiring him out even more. Seriously, after this, he can't start against Manchester United. And this isn't me saying Mount out or Mount's poor or anything. It's nothing like that. Mount is overplayed. Mount needs rest. Give him the rest he needs. Also, when we're chasing a win, two attacking subs in the 90th minute. I've been talking about Callum Hudson-Odoi needing to come and have impact. Bring him on the 90th minute for what? To just do a couple sprints? Same thing with Tammy, I mean, what were they being brought on for? Just for the appearance bonus or what? Game management really does need to improve. We're going to roll through the player ratings quickly before I talk about Petr Cech. Uh, Mendy in goal, I'm going to give him a 6. I thought a couple good saves from him and I'll probably give him a 7 if I'm just thinking of how poor Kepp has been in recent games. But it was a very solid performance from him, he's going to get a 6. Rhys James as well, I'm going to give a 6. He kept a, a Campos in his pocket all game and had a quietly good performance out of all the defenders today. Uh, Kurt Zuma, poor, I'm going to give him a 4. Uh, had a lot of mistakes in his game today. Passing was awkward, didn't look confident, didn't look back to his best and was saved by Ben Chilwell on numerous occasions. Thiago Silva, I thought he had a good performance. I'll give him a 7. 
I thought he read the game perfectly, like I already said, came out with a lot of decent performances and I mean decent blocks and tackles and was in the right place at the right time for a lot of situations. Chilwell, man of the match, he gets an 8, he was all over that left hand side defensively and offensively and saved Kurt Zuma's ass multiple times so he gets, a, he gets an 8 from me. N'Golo Kante, 3, probably was his worst performance in a Chelsea shirt in my opinion. Really lucky not to get sent off. It wasn't a great performance from him. Passes were sloppy and the tackles were sloppy as well, which is something you don't usually say about N'Golo Kante. Jorginho looked a bit better. I also like the fact that they were reading each other's game. They weren't pressing at the same time. They were trying to be a, they were trying to interchange between each other well. Smart performance from him. Did well trying to distribute possession, but there weren't really a lot of impact going forward. Um, Mason Mount, free. And again, it's not me trying to criticise Mount, but he's overplayed. He's struggling and you can see it on the pitch. Hopefully he doesn't play against Manchester United and he gets a bit of a break because he's been played way too much for his own good. Kai Havertz, 4.5 I think, really struggled to have any impact in this game. Slowed down attacks and struggled to get the impact they usually want. He looked very cautious today. It might be because of the goal that he, could, that he had an impact in for the Southampton match. He was trying to have a much more cautious look to his game. But he didn't really have the much, as much impact as he wanted. Timo Werner as well, 5, not a lot of impact. Didn't really get fed a lot, but the first touch didn't really help him a lot. And I don't think he had that much of a good game. So I'll give him a 5. Going on to subs, Kovacic, 7 today. I thought he had a huge improvement on our performance and helped us to progress the ball from defence to attack really well. So I'm going to give him a 7. Tammy and hudson Adoy, no ratings because they were there for 2 minutes. Like, what am I rating from them? Is there anyone else I'm missing? Hakim Ziyech. Um, decent impact on the right-hand side. And his work rate was very good, but didn't really have many vintage moments from him. So I'm going to give him a 5. But yeah, this is the end of the player ratings of the review. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And now on to the optimistic part of this video, the part where I was looking forward to. Big P is back. If you guys are taking a look at the Premier League squad list for this season, you might see a very recognisable name in there. Petr Cech is back. Matt Law has reported that Petr Cech has been included in the squad as emergency goalkeeper cover. This is a precautionary step due to the unprecedented conditions currently caused by the virus crisis. He takes up a position as a non-contract player. And guys, I was saying it as a joke, but I can't believe it. Our goalkeeping has been so bad that we've actually had to drag Petr Cech out of retirement. As a final warning to Kepa, just like, yo, fix up, bruv. Because we're about to bring this guy back and as soon as he has a game, you're out, you're done. It's annoying that we got Kepa on a five-year contract and we already know that this guy, we're not getting rid of him anytime soon. So it makes sense to bring in Petr Cech for right now, at least as a short-term gap. He's on a, Kepa is on a five-year deal, 100k a week, and we want to try and recoup as much as we can of that transfer fee, even though I don't know what we're smoking to think that we're even going to get half of that right now. So it makes sense to bring in Petr Cech, and I'm not going to lie... It's good for him that he gets uh, the goodbye that he actually deserves because those five years back at Arsenal, that's no way to end your career. Especially the last game being that Europa League final against us. And as great as it was for us, it was terrible for Petr Cech. It was a really bad moment for him. Hopefully he does get a game or two. I can't lie, even just for the nostalgia, I do want to see Petr Cech in Chelsea blue. Also, if we're doing all of this, bring back, bring back uh, what's his name, Christoph Lolishon as well. I was really struggling to pronounce his name. But bring back Lolishon because that's the guy that brought him to the very top and he got booted out unfairly because Courtois was being a wanker as per usual. Bring back Lolishon, you'll get a better Petr Cech as well. You know what, I'm not even kidding you. His inclusion has already made him the number two goalkeeper for Chelsea. I'm not worried about him being washed or anything like that because Arsenal didn't have the same goalkeeping coach that we had. Christoph Lolishon was the guy for him and he was the guy that kept him at his consistent best for over 10 years at Chelsea Football Club. I am very optimistic with this transfer because we'll actually have safe hands behind the net. 
Petacek, I'm not gonna lie, it does feel like he's just pulled the retirement card just to sneak out of Arsenal on the quick time and come join Frankie Lampard. But I enjoy the agenda. I'm glad Petacek's back. I'm glad we've got another leader back in the squad. I'm glad we've actually got someone safe back in goal as well. Let me know your thoughts is down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And the king is back. Come on.